Hello, I'm Maddie. I'm Karina. And this is Everything But the Fairy Tales Sync. Today's episode, we are going to the Celtic mythology, which we haven't gone to in quite a while. I don't think we've been there since episode 14, if I remember correctly. We touched on it for mermaids, but yes, I don't know what episode mermaids was. This is true, 100% Celtic story. We are talking about the children of Lear. I'm very excited for this one. I guess a very weird and kind of chaotic story. Good. We haven't done one of those in a while. No, we have not. Eh, Thor was pretty chaotic. True. In a different way, though. Mm-hmm. The con- the people were chaotic, not the content. <laughs> Anyways, recommendations. My recommendation is a specific podcast episode from Lore. I'm pretty sure it's episode 150. And it talks about Michael Scott. I briefly talked about Michael Scott in the Bob on She episode, which is the right. previous Celtic one that we did. So go listen to that one. It talks all about Michael Scott and his life. And it's just a very interesting episode. Plus, Aaron Mankey just has a really relaxing voice. I enjoy Aaron thing. Mankey. So I'm going to cheat and I'm going to do two because you reminded me and I can't decide which one. Um, my first recommendation is Umbrella Academy. If Good you show. haven't seen it yet, you're living under a rock. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Not to be sassy, but you are. It's so good. My second recommendation is another Aaron Minky podcast, uh, Unobscured, where he does season-long deep dives into like different cases. Um, I'm listening to his one on the Salem Witch Trials right now, and it is very good. Mm-hmm. So let's get into the episode, shall we? The Children of Lear is one of the best-known stories in Ireland. It's pretty well-known, pretty common. And... The story is that Lear was a very beloved king who lived in a beautiful castle with his queen and his four children, Benula, Ode, Khan, and Fiacre. Those All right, are we're going we're gonna to clear this up now. This is not the same King Lear that's in Shakespeare. No, this is not. This is a different Thank King Lear. Thank God, because if I had to see Shakespeare one more this time, king, I'm going to... This is King Lear spelled L-I-R. Cool. Yes. Anyways, so him and his wife, Queen Eva, different from the other lady we're about to talk about. Queen Eva was very beloved, but sadly passed away after having their last child after birth complications. Of course, and there's another dead mom. Lear was reasonably distraught. They had been married for a very long time. They were very mm-hmm. happy together. However, he eventually remarried a woman named Eva. Gotcha. So his wife, Eva, died, and he married Eva. Cool. And... Man has the type, that's fine. No, but it's worse. In some stories, Aoife was Eva's sister. I mean, that's pretty on par for the royals. They kind of suck. But Aoife and Eva. I just, I just, I can't get over it. But yeah, so Eva, not Eva. Wow, I'm going to get those mixed up. Aoife at first was, you know, she was very caring with the children. She loved them mm-hmm. really. But she soon became jealous because she thought that Lear loved his children more than her. So, you know... One day, and this is, you know, an old legend, so I don't exactly know if this is the correct story because there are so many variations, but this is the most common story that is seen. Mm -hmm. So one day, the children are going to the lake to swim for the day, and Aoife followed them. And the oldest daughter, Fanula, was like, why are you following us? We don't need to be followed. You know, we're Mm -hmm. mature enough. And she was like, oh, well, I just want to hang out with you guys for the day. You know, something completely normal. And regardless of the fact of whether she genuinely cared for the children or this was her plan all along, Aoife cursed the four children and turned them into swans. Yeah. I'm just disappointed. Yeah, so she had a druid swan because in some stories she was a druid. In other stories, she just stole the druid swan. But regardless, she turned the children into the swans because she was jealous of the love that they were receiving from their father because she believed all of Lear's love should go to her and not to the children. All right, so this is going to be Karina being salty. If you are concerned that your significant other loves their children more than you. Maybe you shouldn't be in that relationship. So, even though the spell turned them into swans, it did not take their voices away, so they were talking swans. (laughs) It should not be as funny to me as this. A la Barbie of Swan Lake. Love that movie. That is a good movie. This story is actually considered to be inspiration for- I was gonna ask. It is considered to be inspiration for the story, but once I actually looked up separately from this story, the inspiration for Swan Lake, it was a combination of Germanic fairy tales and Mm -hmm. Slavic fairy tales, so I can't find the actual origin. However, some people think that this story is 
connected at least connected at least to it in some mm-hmm. way shape or form their voices were not taken away and Fanula asked Aoife what have you done to us and Aoife laughed and admitted that she cursed them so this lady felt no remorse you know I hate this lady. <laughs> yeah so the children begged her to reverse it but it was too powerful and you know some stories say that she was remorseful and did mm-hmm. try and reverse it but she just couldn't because it was way more powerful than she thought it would be so Instead, she put an end to it. She told them that they were swans for 900 years. They would spend 300 years on Lake Devereaux, which is the lake that they were currently at. Then they would go for 300 more years on the Sea of Moyle, which was a very stormy, unsafe sea. And then 300 years on the waters of Inish Glory. And then... Only the sound of a Christian bell could break the curse. Another way that the okay, curse so could, what could this happen before the nine hundred years, or yeah. did they have to do the nine hundred years? That is, the- there's like three different stories. So one of the stories is nine hundred years. The other story is a Christian bell, and then this third story is that a king from the north, you know, a king's son from the north and a king's daughter from the south would get married, and their union would break the curse upon the children. Okay, this. Slight sidetrack, but it's a funny sidetrack because I'm envisioning this happen to happening to this lady. So when I think of swans, I inherently think of my father when he was 10 years old in Hyde Park, deciding that it was a good idea to pluck a swan feather. So my dad got chased through Hyde Park by a very, very angry swan. And I want to envision this happening to that lady. <laughs> no. So bad. So Aoife returned to the kingdom without the children and Lear was distraught. You know, he was like, where are my kids? They went out. So he sent people out all over the place. You know, he Mm -hmm. was like, find them, search for them. Aoife is an example of a snitch who didn't end up in a ditch, but I'm, you know, I'm upset over that, but it's fine. Anyways, so Lear finally found the children and he was like, you're swans, you know, like what Mm -hmm. happened to that? So... He went back to Aoife and begged Aoife to lift the curse, but she refused. She said, nah, buddy, I ain't doing that. So can you guess what Lear did instead? Stabby, stabby? No, he moved to the waterside and every day would have parties and dinners and anything he could do to make the children forget that they were swans. He wanted them to have as normal of a life as possible even though they were swans. Okay, dad of the year award. I know, Lear is like the best dad. And he, like, honestly, Aoife is a terrible person. Mm -hmm. Because Lear, you know, he was always close to his children, but the death Mm -hmm. death of his wife brought them all closer together. Mm -hmm. You know, the rumor was that the four children slept in one bed all together, and then Lear slept in a separate bed in the same room. Like, that's how close Mm -hmm. they were. He did everything with them. Oh, that's so sad. And then... This is sadder. Eventually, Lear grew old and died. Why am I genuinely so upset right now? <laughs> I know. It's sad. Anyways. So, there are a ton of different stories as to what happened to the mm-hmm. four children after this. One of the stories is that they, you know, went on and they did their 300 years in each place. And another story is that the prophecy of the king's son from the north and the king's daughter from the south actually came true and they got mm-hmm. married. And the queen wanted the swans as a wedding gift. So the king sent, you know, he sent his guards Mm -hmm. out to find the children. But the children actually turned into withered old people because, you know, they had been swans for 900 years. And they were christened before they sadly passed away from old age. A lot of death in this episode. Eva, not Eva, Eva was the good queen. Eva, you're a Mm -hmm. snitch. You should have ended up in a ditch. Snitches end up in ditches, Eva. Eva and Joshua, get out. They can marry each other and then be thrown into the ocean. Anyways, that is all for this week's episode. It was a short, sweet, and very chaotic one. And sad. And sad. And sad. Lear, you win Father of the Year. How long ago did this take place, by the way? Long, long ago, like so they've they've probably served out their years. Well, yeah. Well, I'm glad. Long ago in days of old. I'm glad. Yeah, Ifa, I hope you had a miserable life. Yeah, I don't. I I couldn't find what happened to her after. You know, I think she just kind of fled or disappeared or something. But I hope she was the grandmother from Dragons of Italy and then got what she deserved. 
because she tried to bully a child. We are not bringing Dragon <laughs> Boy <Virginia> up ever again. <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyways, what's coming up next week? That's a good question. I'm done check. <laughs> wow. I'm actually uh, gonna see if I can find what happened to Aoife. Oh wait, I know what's coming up next week. Next week we are going into the Japanese legend of Kitsune. I'm very excited. I think they're fantastic. Didn't you um, mention them in Vampires question mark? Vampires, werewolves? I think werewolves. Two? I don't know. I probably brought them up in Werewolves. Yeah, see, I, I can't find what happened to Aoife. I choose to believe something awful. <laughs> we don't condone murder. Unless it's necessary. Unless it's deserved. No. That was, that was a Kaz Brecker moment from both of us. It's fine. Yeah. We're both slowly turning into him. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and go follow us on Instagram and TikTok. And fingers crossed the website will be up by now because this episode Unless is coming. Unless some dramatic incident occurs, the website will be up by now. Yeah, because this episode is coming out in August. And if we hit 50 followers here and 50 followers, 50 subscribers here, what am I saying? And 50 followers on Instagram, I will buy a giant cardboard cutout of Loki and he will live in the background of my end of the videos. If we hit 100 on both places, I will buy a cardboard cutout of Thor. And if we hit 1,000, my stepdad Steve will milk the plastic cow outside of Hagen. And if we ever get ad revenue, I apparently am buying a One Direction tapestry. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even into One Direction in middle school. No, neither of us were. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.